I'm really excited about today's video because today I'm starting my first doll in a series that's based around the major arcana cards of the tarot deck. So I came up with this idea one night when I was laying in bed, scrolling through Pinterest, as you do, and I came across some artwork that was based around tarot cards and it really grabbed my attention. Now, I've always been interested in tarot cards. I like the artwork and the symbology, but it's not something I've really practiced or used in my real life. So that night I went from scrolling endlessly through Pinterest to reading endlessly about tarot cards. And obviously I discovered that there's a whole lot about them that I don't actually know. Like, do you pronounce it tarot, tarot, taro? But anyway, people have been using tarot cards for ages as a way to try to predict the future or using them more as a therapeutic tool. Their history is as complex and rich as the symbology on the cards themselves. And that really inspired me to start this series, to try to see if I can try to unpack some of that rich and complex symbology with a doll. So today I'm going to start with the tower card and I'm going to give a little bit of an explanation about the meaning behind the card and how that relates to my doll. But if that's not your thing, that's okay. Just fast forward a little bit and join me for the doll makeover. But be sure to stay tuned toward the end of the video where I draw cards to pick the next doll for my series. The tower card is often considered a negative card in the tarot deck. Just looking at it, you can see that it's full of destruction. The card is inspired by the Tower of Babel from the Bible, so it represents violent upheaval and constructs of materialism and greed. But there is a very positive side to the Tower card, and that's the message that my doll is based on. Too often, we build our lives around misguided constructs, but with the Tower, we see the crumbling of pride and ego. This allows us to see what matters with clarity and to grow and rebuild who we are stronger and truer to ourselves. I want my doll to represent someone who has shred misguided ideals and has become someone with an impenetrable truth of who they are. To do that, I have looked to the fashion designer Wow Pei for inspiration. She has a collection of designs that is inspired by architecture, and I was particularly drawn to this dress. This gorgeously constructed dress will be the basis of my tower design. Okay, enough explanations, I promise. Let's start making the doll. For this doll makeover, I'm going to use a secondhand Caddy Noir Monster High doll. I chose her because the tower has a strong black and gold theme, and I think she would look great with a black and gold avant-garde makeup look. Also, her face has a very strong and independent feel, which I think goes perfectly with the theme of the card. I'm going to have to give her a whole new head of hair, so one of the first things I'm going to do is remove the old hair plugs from her head. Soaking her head in boiling hot water is a great method to use because it softens the rubber in her head, which makes the head easier to detach and it melts the glue in her head, which will allow me to pull the hair plugs out. Using my force up tool, I can now easily pull her old hair out. Using a cotton pad and nail polish remover with acetone in it, I am removing her factory face. If you want to try this, remember to use either pure acetone or nail polish remover that has acetone in it. Otherwise, you might end up ruining your doll. Catty Noir has cat ears, and as much as I like them, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut them off. With an X-Acto knife, I'm going to carefully cut them off and save them for another project. 
there are some small holes where the ears used to be, and I'm going to try to fix these with some hot glue. For her hair, I'm using the color Blackest Night by The Doll Planet. I'm going to cut this hank of hair in half, which will give me enough length for a long but slicked back look. And since I'm going to have her hair slicked back, I won't actually have to give her a whole head reroute, which is definitely a bonus. Even though I won't have to reroute the whole head, I still have a lot of work to do. Here, you can see I'm taking small sections of hair, and with my reroute tool, I'm starting to plug that hair into her scalp. And here's her new hairdo. Okay. Not quite, it still looks a little crazy, but that's nothing that little styling can't fix. To keep her new hair plugs from falling out, I'm going to pour in some tacky glue and let it sit for 24 hours. So, like I said, I chose Caddy Noir because she would be perfect for an abstract black and gold makeup look totally fast forwarded here because I didn't like the look I ended up with. It was way too busy and way too cartoonish looking. But that's no problem. I'm going to remove everything and use natural skin tones instead. So I've got a fresh face again and I've sprayed it with three coats of Mr. Super Clear Sealant. This provides me with a surface that I can draw her new face on. I'm warming up the skin with different tints of Burnt Sienna Soft Pastels. I have to work in layers because Mr. Super Clear dulls the color after each use. This is a second layer and as you can see, the first layer is barely visible. And now I'm blocking in the eye shape, pupils, and I'm building up the brown skin tones more. Here I'm using lighter browns as a highlight and coming back in with black to add depth at the temples. It's like contouring, but for dolls. Jumping forward a little bit, I've started working on the eye details with watercolor pencils. And now I'm adding more details to the eyebrows. Next, I'm adding gold pastels as a highlighter and adding more details with watercolor pencils. And finally, I'm coming in with acrylic paint to give details more definition. Here, I'm giving her a touch of gold for her eye makeup. After finishing up some final tweaks, she'll be ready for one last layer of Mr. Super Clear and for gloss on her lips and eyes. Time to start working on the most ambitious part of the makeover, the dress. The dress is made up of individual panels, and to start off, I made a template from a photo of Wow Pei's dress. This will help me figure out scaling and the positioning of each panel. After I was happy with the template, I traced each panel on some thicker crafting wood. Off camera, I'm going to cut each panel out, give them a coat of clear gesso, and paint them black. Now that the surface is prepped, I'm going to continue the architectural theme by drawing gothic style windows on each of the panels of the lower skirt. is considered one of the more negative cards, 
So on the upper skirt, I'm going to draw symbols for some of the other cards that have negative connotations to them. Here are all the panels together. I'm also going to make one final piece. This will be for the top of the dress. To make sure the drawings don't smudge, I'm going to give them two coats of crystal clear sealant. For the next step, I'm going to cover each panel in a sheer black fabric. So, I don't know a lot of technical sewing terms, but basically, now I'm taking some fabric and placing it on top of this pattern I made with my template. I'm going to match up each panel to the correct spot and glue it onto the fabric. And here are all the panels in their right place. I'm going to peel off the paper and secure the panels to the fabric a little bit more. Now you can see that I can move everything together and form the right shape. So I've put the upper skirt on my doll, and now I will do the same with the lower skirt. To make sure the skirt stays in the position I want it to, I'm gluing in these painted skewer sticks. You could say that this provides structure to the structure that's supposed to look like a structure. Plus it looks pretty, so yeah, there's that. Now I'm going to close the lower skirt and attach it to the upper skirt. Now that I've put the dress together, including the top, I want it to look more finished. To do that, I'm adding trim that I made out of painted elastic strips. I just have to do a few more touch-ups and then get rid of like a million hot glue flyaways. But after that, I'd say her dress is done. The tower card features a crown at the top of the tower, and I definitely want to include it into her outfit. To make the crown, I'm first going to measure this doll's head using my circle stencil. This gave me the size I needed to make the base, which I made off camera with craft foam. With strips of more craft foam, I'm going to start making the top part of the crown. I'm not really sure what to call the bent pieces of the crown, so I'm just gonna call them bendy boys. <laughs> I'm sizing the bendy boys and connecting them together. Now that the bendy boys are together, I'm putting on this fastener and I'm going to try to make the bendy boys more bendy? After attaching a bead to the top of the crown, I'm now going to paint the entire thing black with acrylic paint. And I just can't have a crown that isn't ducked out in gems and shiny things, so I'm going to use some nail art rhinestones to make it sparkle.
I have one more finishing touch to add to the crown. If I could just get this thing to open. <clears throat> um, anyway, <laughs> to the top of the crown, I'm adding this star charm for an extra touch of sparkle. I'm going to keep her hair styling simple and slick it back so that the crown is the main focus. You'll see what I mean in the final photos. The last part for her outfit are her shoes, and I'm taking a pair that I had in my collection and painting the purple parts black. And here is my finished tower card doll. She was quite a big project, and honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull it off, but I'm very, very happy with how she turned out. But of course, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments what you think of her. Do you think she captured the essence of the tower card? In just a moment, I'm going to be drawing cards to pick the next doll I'll be working on for the series. But before I do, I would love it if you took a moment to like this video and subscribe if you like this doll makeover. Doing so will help me continue to grow my channel and share my art with the world. When it comes to picking the next card for the series, I thought it'd be fun to draw cards for it, like it's its own little card reading. I've taken out all the suit cards from my deck and left the major arcana cards. These are the cards like the tower or the fool that represents major themes or life lessons. I'm going to shuffle my deck and draw three cards. One of these cards will be the inspiration for the next doll I make, and the other two will be shuffled back into the deck to be used later. Okay, here we go. The first card is the Empress. Next is the Hermit. And last is the Queen of Wands. Wow, these are some great cards to choose from right off the bat. And I'm going to have to think about which one to pick. Which one do you think I should choose? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a new doll creation. Until then, bye!